Hi everyone, what I'm looking at today is this AS6C62256 32K static RAM chip. I've got the data sheet here. Uh, we'll just quickly go through this and then we'll jump straight over to the breadboard. So the features, it's got an access time of 55 nanoseconds, low power consumption, Operation current is typically 15 milliamps when VCC is 3 volts, although I'm not going to be using it at 3 volts. You can see it's got a wide range power supply, 2.7 to 5.5 volts, so I'm going to be using it at 5 volts. Fully compatible with all competitors' 5 volt products, fully compatible with all competitors' 3.3 volt products. All inputs and outputs are TTL compatible, fully static operation. Now, Static, what it means by static, which is why it's called static RAM, SRAM, means that we don't need to keep sending it refresh signals. We don't need to keep sending um, refresh lines to the um, chip. We can just write to the chip and it, it will just remember it. It just makes the, the connections easier, the operation easier. So that's going to be useful for us. Uh, Tri-state outputs, and then it's got data retention voltage, 1.5 volt min, um, again, not too concerned about that. Um, this is what I want to see. Package 28 pin, um, 600 mil P dip package. So um, with a dip package, we can plug it into a breadboard to do some experimenting. So the general description, the AS6C62256 is a 200 and 62,144 bit low power CMOS static random access memory organized as 32,768 words by eight bits. Now I'm not quite sure why they refer to them as words because I was always taught that eight bits is a byte and that two bytes is a word. So I thought you would have 16 bits to make a word. So I would call these bytes, not words, but it doesn't really matter. It's just eight bits. Um, so this is the total number of bits. And then this is the number of bytes. So it's a 32K uh, RAM chip. Um, I'm not gonna go too much into this stuff because it's pretty simple how this works. Um, we've got 15 address lines. We need 15 address lines to fully address the 32K of RAM. Um, we've got eight data lines. Um, they, they're called DQ0 to DQ7. Not sure why they're called DQ and not just D. Possibly something to do with their tri-state logic. Um, and then we've got a chip enable line, which is uh, active low. The hash indicates it's active low. And then we've got a write enable line, again, active low. And then we've got an output enable line, again, active low. So this is for writing and this is for reading. Then we've just got our power supply and ground, VCC and VSS. Um, there is a little block diagram, not too concerned about that. Um, there's our, our pinout. This is the main thing we're interested in because I'm pretty confident I know how this chip works. Um, just want to make sure that we've got all the pins connected up correctly. I'm actually going to start here at pin 10. Um, which is address line zero. And you can see we've got address one, address two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So there are our first eight address lines from pin 10 working that way. And then from then on, it gets a little bit sort of all over the place. So I believe uh, there's, there's line eight, address eight, address nine, address 10, address 11, uh, 12, 13, and 14. Um, I'm just going to tie all the um, the high one the high numbers here to um, ground to pull them low. Um, I'm only really going to be using A0 through to A7 just for demonstrating. Um, then if we again go back to pin 10, if we work the other way, pin 11, and um, we've got our data lines. So we've got data 0, 1, 2, and then over here 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So they're a little bit more organized. So we'll go around the chip this way. We've got our VCC up here and our uh, ground down here, VSS is ground. Um, that's pretty conventional for dip packages. Um, top right is normally VCC and bottom left is normally ground. Um, and then we've just got our three other 
control lines uh, output enable there, chip enable there, and write enable is here. So that's really all I'm interested in um, as far as the data sheet goes for now. There is a truth table there, tells you how to pull the lines high and low depending on whether you want to read or write, um, as well as a couple of other states, the standby and the output disabled states. Um, and then there it, we've got some characteristics. And the only other thing I wanted to mention was that they do give you the, the timing diagrams. I'm not going to go into the timing diagrams. I, I don't want to get too complicated at, at this stage. So that's basically the data sheet. The main thing we're concerned with is the pinout. Um, but let's jump straight over to the breadboard and, and have some uh, a little bit of fun playing around with this. Now this might look a little bit daunting. Um, but it's really not, it's really pretty straightforward. I'll, I'll just go around the board and explain what, what I've done. Um, the green lines here are the address lines A0 through to A7, and I've just pulled them across here to some dip switches. Now these dip switches, they're, they're tied directly to the um, VCC line, so they're, they're connected to the, the high line. And then at the bottom of the dip switches are connected down to ground through these pull down resistors. So the way this works is um, while the, the dip switches are in the, the up position, they're off. And meaning that they're not connected to the um, VCC. Or, the, or these address lines are not connected to the VCC because the switches are off. But the address lines will be connected to ground. So when these switches are in the up position, all the lines are pulled down to ground through these pull down resistors. These are 10K pull down resistors. And the other address lines I'm not using, I've pulled them all down with pull down resistors. There's a couple down here and there's a few at the, the top up here. Um, then I've got a read button and a write button. Um, these yellow wires here are my, my read line and my write line. Now uh, they have pull up resistors, so they're pulled up to the VCC. So when we're not pressing the button, they're high, and we push the button to pull them down to ground um, through these black wires here. So pushing the button pulls the line low. Then I've got my data lines here, the purple wires. I've got the eight data lines going out to these eight um, resistors. These are current limiting resistors, and they connect down to ground through these red LEDs. Um, this is just to give us some visual output of what's happening on the data lines. And then the only other things we've got on the chip here, we've got the VCC up here, we've got the ground down here, and I've got the chip enable line pulled to low all the time via this little black wire here. So the only lines we're going to manipulate are the, um, the read and the write lines. Now I've got these yellow flying leads here. Um, might look a little messy, but... What that enables me to do, it enables me to pull the data lines high or low by either connecting them to the um, VCC line to pull the line high or um, the ground line to, to pull the line low. So that enables me to control the data lines. And then this over here, you can essentially ignore this. This is just a little power supply. I've got it connected to a 9 volt battery, but it's going through a little uh, 5 volt voltage regulator here. So. For all intents and purposes, the, the VCC is 5 volts. Um, the orange wire here is my VCC coming out of the voltage regulator to that VCC line. And I've got ground coming out of the voltage regulator to the, the top blue rail. And then I've got um, the, the ground was also tied down to this bottom rail here because we're also using some grounds down here. Now. If we press the read button, see nothing's happening. Um, that's because I've actually programmed it. Let me reset this by unplugging the battery. So I'll disconnect the power. This is um, volatile, I think you'd call it, wouldn't you? So if we disconnect the power, it would um, lose its data. Power back on. Now I believe if we hit the read button, we've got some random data in the chip now. We don't really know what's in um, each memory location because we've just uh, reset it essentially. Um, so 
with my address set to zero, I'm getting this particular pattern. I'm getting three on, one off, one on, two off, and one on. Uh, if I change to a different address location, I can just randomly set these switches and do a read. I, I, I get a different pattern. So all I'm really trying to say is that the, all the addresses are just filled with garbage, basically. Um, so that demonstrates the, the reading. You just set your address lines and press the read button, pull the read line low, and the, the data will appear on the, on the data output lines. Now to program the chip, to write data into the chip, um, we need to set the data lines and press the write button. So I can set my data lines like this. So if I set all of these up, that's address zero. And if I put all the lines to low, all the data lines down to low, see if I can do that, I can't see very well, so bear with me. Don't know if I've got them all in the right order, it doesn't really matter as long as they're all pulled low. So they're all pulled low, and I can press the right button and that will store that zero value in uh, memory address zero. And then if we switch to memory address one, and if I set this data line to a one, so this is a binary representation, so the, the first bit would be bit one, or have a value of one. Uh, so if I write, and then if I change it to a two, to two, and we'll go to memory address two. Can I hold this board still? Memory address two, we'll do a write. Then we'll go to memory address three. We'll set the data line to three. And we'll do a write. Then we'll go to memory address four. So this will be four. Set the data line to a four. Is that right? Yeah, four. Do a right. I'll go to memory address five. We'll do a right. Hope I don't make any mistakes here. We'll go to memory address six. Six on the data, we'll do a write. Address seven. Seven on the data, we'll write. Address eight. Um, what would, that would be eight, wouldn't it? And It's important to tie them low, not just leave them floating. So that's an eight. So we'll write that, and then nine. Hopefully, you can see where I'm going. This is a nine, and address ten. And we'll store a ten. Eleven. We'll store an 11, 12 would be like that. Um, get myself a little confused here now. I think I've got it right. Is that 12? Yep. Right. 13, nearly there. 13, right. Uh, 14. That's right, isn't it? 14, right, and then 15, all the switches down, and 15, and we'll do a right. So I've programmed the first 16 memory uh, locations, um, locations 0 through to 15, and I've put the data in them. I've put 0 in address 0, 1 in address 1, 2 in address 2 so on th right through to address 15. So if we reset this all back to zeros, 
and we can just verify that that is all stored as I intended. I'll just unplug all the data lines and then we're at address zero. So if I do a read, I should get zero and I do an address one. There's a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and 15. I think I got that right. Leave me a comment if I made a mistake. Um, so hopefully that sort of proves pretty much how simple it is to both read and write from the um, static RAM chip. Um, reading was just a simple case of setting the address line and uh, pull the read line low. And writing was a case of setting the address line, setting the data bits on the data line and pressing the write button. Um, or pulling the right line low. So that's basically the AS C6 62256 static RAM chip. Now where I'm going to take this next, um, I'm going to hook this up to a microcontroller. So perhaps in the next video you'll see that. We'll hook it up to a Z80 microcontroller and we'll get the microcontroller um, reading and writing from, from the RAM. Now this was originally intended to be a setup for a ROM chip and I realized that the ROM chip I'd ordered was was the wrong one and it was actually um, a, a write once operation. So I'd only be able to write to the ROM once and that's no good for me because I'm experimenting. I want to be able to do multiple writes. Um, and it also needed a 12 volt line for, for writing and I want to keep everything at five volts. So I've ordered some replacement chips for that. So we will, we will swap this out for a ROM chip um, we'll take it one step further. We'll um, replace this manual operation with um, an Arduino programmer. So we can use an Arduino to actually program the ROM and then we'll be able to transfer the ROM into the 8-bit um, computer and uh, execute uh, programs that have been stored in the ROM. Be a lot more useful than the RAM. Although ultimately the system will have both ROM and RAM. So hopefully you found that interesting. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And that's it for now. I'll see you next time.